Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Thought provoking. Informative. Engaging. Are you ready to be inspired and equipped? And now, the Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Welcome to the Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort, where we will vigorously attempt to get you out of the Monday blues with our cheerful smiles and our bubbly personalities. Do you get Monday blues, seriously? Uh, you know what? You get cloudy blues. I get cloudy cloud day blues. <laughs> cloudy blues, but yeah. the sky's not blue, you get the blues. Oh boy, do I ever. <laughs> And you know, we are cheerful today. We do have a pep in our step because our dear brother, Dave Felbert, or Dave Fall Out of Tree, so is here with us all the way from Illinois. So Ray, tell us a story about our dear brother, Dave Fall Out of Tree. I was standing at my table once in a, in a, in a lobby of a church and someone went past and says, I'm never gonna listen to Ray Kumpf again or something like that, wasn't it Dave? <laughs> something like that, I said, excuse me? What are you talking about? And Dave told me that he was up a tree, he's gonna shoot some deer, he's listening to my tapes, and uh, as he went to come down, he had earplugs in, I think, he slipped down the tree and broke his leg, snapped it, ah. and had to crawl about 100 yards to your car, and the tape three was miles. hanging out of his ear. And three, he miles. <laughs> three miles. Three miles? <laughs> it, was, it was a real proper snap. He was in absolute agony, and all the time he was crawling, the earplug had come out just a little, he could, he could hear me in the background going, So I called him Dave Fallout of Tree and found his name is Dave Felber and uh, he's always been Dave Fallout. We love him and it's great to have him. He drove, wow. what, two, two and a half thousand miles? Amazing. Amazing. That's commitment. Yeah, but drive me And he crazy. was listening to Ray and I said earlier, good thing he's not Dave Fall out of car. Thank <laughs> <Yeah>. God. <laughs> he maybe has to drive back. Uh, well, friends, it is Monday and what a joy it is to be back with you. We have an interesting story to kick things off with. It's a story about our good friend, Bill Maher. We talked about Bill Maher on the program <laughs> recently. We love Bill Maher. Uh, and does friendship have to be mutual? Does what, what, who? Friendship have to be mutual. Uh, not really. It doesn't. You Jesus can consider called, your, someone your friend. Though Jesus they called Judas friend right. as he betrayed him with a kiss. That's a good point. So we're our friend. Are you calling Bill Maher Bill Judas? Maher. He's our friend. Do you say Bill Nye? No. Oh, Bill Maher. <laughs> See? There's a lot of bills My ears there. are still clogged from the weekend. <laughs> All right, this is from the Washington Times. Comedian Bill Maher told his HBO real-time audience on Friday that God was a psychotic mass murderer. He made the comments during a conversation on the biblical story of Noah and the upcoming Hollywood version of it that's about to hit the big screen. But the th and this is a quote. But the thing that's really disturbing about Noah isn't the, s isn't the silly, it's that it's immoral. Isn't that it's silly, it's that it's immoral. It's about a psychotic mass murderer who gets away with it and his name is God. Mr. Marr said, adding, what kind of tyrant punishes everyone just to get back at the few he's mad at? I mean, besides Chris Christie. Now, this is mellow because I watched the clip. Yes. And I had a hard time sitting through it because yes, it was man. horrendously blasphemous. He called God <laughs> certain names that... <clears throat> you can't uh, repeat. Yeah, I can't even repeat. Uh, and, and you just step back and you think, what in the world is this guy thinking? You know, it's like, Bill, go too far, Mar. Yeah. You know, one thing that, uh, that's always fascinated me is the fact you've got a guy who's a comedian who can be really funny and get laughs. He finds if he adds dirt and filth to his routine, it gets more laughs, so he becomes a filthy mouth uh, a comedian. They find the same thing with mockery of God. You mock God, call God names, it makes human beings laugh because yeah. we're by nature anti-God. So this has put him on steroids. He's, he's, he's hit the news again, he's popular, and it's done in the safety of his, it reminds me of a little bully that's on the second floor of his mother's house yelling bullying at the neighbors. Right. He can't be got at, he's in the safety of his studio. Yeah. And uh, I remember once, one guy stood next to me when I was up here preaching and he yelled out, God, if you're there, strike me, kill me. And he, he was blasphemous and he turned to me and says, nothing happened. And I said, yes, it did. You just stored up more wrath Wow, that's going to be revealed on so the day. So true. <laughs> Same with Bill Maher. And you know, th things have gotten to a degree though, Ray, where uh, there used to be people who would, sh who would shy away from doing that, even though they mm -hmm. may not have been necessarily religious. But the way in which he did it, it was like this flaunting, and people on the, on the panel were sitting there laughing and mocking. But did you notice their laughter at some points wasn't 
they couldn't kind of like ah uh, but but that's what steps it up to the next yes. level before long it's kind of like automatic you know yeah. but i like the point you made he's sitting in his ivory tower doing this yes. but we have someone who is here with us today who's an extraordinary individual who's been gone a lot because he's been working on the noah movie but he's back he came out of his ivory tower and went and faced atheist toe to toe mark spence tell us about that Tell you about what Bill Maher said, what my thoughts <laughs> on that, or about the weekend? <laughs> face to face with Maher, huh? No, tell us about your experience. What did you do this weekend? Yeah, this weekend, I, <laughs> good one. I had uh, spoken at a church, uh, Ebenezer Bible Fellowship Church in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, a great church out there with Pastor Tim. Uh, Pastor Matt Shackelford, one of my pastors at my church. The whole church uh, is a big manger, isn't it? Yeah, yes. But you know, it's funny <laughs> enough, there's a star, there's like a Bethlehem star every, like in every business that's hanging. So it's really big. I'm all, wow, that, that's really quite odd. Well, I spoke at a conference, and then I spoke at a university, Lehigh University, on Saturday night. I dealt with the problem of evil for an hour, and then I took a Q&A for about 50 minutes, uh, maybe 55 minutes, from the students. It's a secular school. And uh, it was great. It, it was neat. The questions weren't too difficult, even though I don't even remember the questions that were asked. I just remember <laughs> these self-refuting statements uh, that were coming out. So are we going to put this out as a, a little downloadable package or something? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I'd like to see the, the raw footage, how, how good it is, and uh, Lord willing, we'll be able to put that out there, maybe even with a little study guide on how to answer commonly asked questions, how to prepare even for questions when you're out on the street. You know, you guys are talking about Bill Maher here, and he says, conservatives are always going on about how Americans are losing their values and their morality. Well, maybe it's because you worship a guy who drowns babies. Hmm. You know, I, I don't know if we have time, but I'd love to be able to... Uh, get into this Please, Mark. discussion. Yeah, if I have time. He, he got into a discussion with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, it was an interview on uh, the Star Talk radio on October 7th, 2012. Listen to now the inconsistency from what you guys just talked about right. to what I found inside this interview. Oh, because I don't have time, I won't read the whole thing, but I will find here some things that he did say. Yeah. He said, I am consistently pro-death. My motto is, let's kill the right people. I am pro-choice. I'm for assisted suicide. I'm for regular suicide. I'm for whatever gets the freeway moving. Well, obviously, he's a bit of a comic, but how do you know when he's trying to be comedic in his approach right. when he's talking? Obviously, he is pro the death penalty, which I am as well for the right, for the right reasons. But he says, this planet, it's too crowded, and we need to promote death. He goes on to say, I'm not just one of those people who thinks that all life is precious. To not bring someone into the world whose life is going to be so miserable in so many ways and so severely compromised, I mean, it's not so hard to create life. It's teeming everywhere. It's something a dog can do. Ray, hey, maybe you can address this for just a moment. This is what he says. All right, so there's these people, these kids, these precious children with birth defects. They're inside their mother's womb, and really killing that baby is the best thing to do. To not bring someone into the world whose life is going to be miserable in so many ways and so severely compromised. What do you say to somebody who has that objection? Maybe there's even somebody watching here. We, we get that quite frequently when we're at the abortion mill. Hey, there, there's something wrong with the baby. They're going to live a life, maybe not to a ripe old age like you and I, but they're going to have issues and they're not going to enjoy life, Ray. What, what, where's this miserable meter? How does he gauge whether someone who's going to be born is going to be miserable or not? I mean, Down syndrome kids are happy kids. All the ones I've met are happy. They want to kiss and hug, and they're just so happy. It's, yeah. the, it's the people, it's normal people that are miserable. Right. So where do you stop? How do you gauge who you want to kill and who you don't want to kill? Who's going to be miserable? Who's not going to be miserable? Short people, tall people, ugly people, comedians? <laughs> <laughs> well, and my thing is, why would he limit it to abortions in terms of babies being born into a world where they're not going to experience all the happiness he's thinking about? Some people may not have an ultrasound. Some people may not do the test to find out whether their child is, has Down syndrome or not. So why not, after they're born, kill them at that time, mm -hmm. right? And they're suffering. I mean, that's the reasoning that was used by those Australian scientists who right. said, hey, post-birth abortion. For any reason that you can abort a child in the womb, you should be able to abort it outside of the womb 
probably till up to about two years old when they begin to, to have you know memories or be, begin to be self-aware or whatever. Yeah. But that that's that's the logical conclusion to these things. We're going to be talking about other things that are going on in our country on a on an upcoming program in terms of how far things go when you open the floodgates and. I'm sure Bill Maher would be behind something like this. You introduce it into society, and little by little, you get there. Mm -hmm. you know? and, uh, and it's disturbing. So Ray, honestly, if you had the chance to speak one-on-one -on -one with Bill Maher, uh, how would you address some of these things with him? Am I told a lie? <laughs> <laughs> I, would I would have to do that. I, 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 would, I, would, I want to engage him in a, in a personal way. Um, and to see if I can get him away from his... Um, his laughing audience, the push yeah. button laughing right, audience. We were talking about that. That yeah. whole routine where he, like in his ivory tower, anything he says gets a laugh. Are they paid laughers? Is it, mm. is it recordings or what? Because it just seems so crazy that they laugh at everything he says. Yeah. So I, I'd like to get him, I'd like to sort of have a meal with him and find, and find out the real him. What does he think about? Right. What about the issues of life and death? And the whole thing of being upset about God drowning all the babies, <laughs> he's an atheist. Right. God doesn't exist. Right. God didn't do anything wrong. He didn't cause a flood. He didn't make anything. The, all this place is a big accident. Nothing created everything according to the atheist. So being upset that God drowned babies in a worldwide flood that he didn't believe happened is like being upset at the fairy godmother for turning the coach back into a pumpkin at midnight. It's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> but by, right. by what standard do you begin to accuse God of wrongdoing? God, you were wrong to do this. But if you live uh, as you believe in a world that is continually evolved, you really do believe in survival of the fittest. That's how we got here. Do whatever it takes to claw up the corporate ladder. Well, you should applaud God if indeed that is what happened. That's not what happened. God is just. He didn't murder anyone. He killed. But here's the thing. God has the right to do whatever he wants to do, and we are all on death row. You know, I was talking about uh, Bill Maher here, and he was saying, hey, you know, the, the world is overcrowded. If, if the baby is hurt, if it's going to be deformed, maybe it'll have some sort of issue, Down syndrome inside the mother's womb, we should be able to get rid of hmm. the baby. Well, Bill Maher, how do you, how do you feel about Stephen Hawking? Right. Stephen Hawking, who did have a bit of a defected, now it's progressed over the years with this uh, motor neuron disease, but Stephen Hawking, who's really atheistic within his worldview, has left an indelible mark upon the scientific community. Would you want to get rid of him as well? Well, you don't care. That's what the bottom line gets down to. Let's look out for number one. And that's, truth be told, that's the case here. Well, I wonder what the results would be if Bill Maher's altruism and selflessness was tested. Uh, he wants the world to be less populated. Would he volunteer? I mean, wow. you know, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, people, right. He doesn't people, take up much, much room. He's just <laughs> right. a little guy. Yeah, he deserves to live. But I'm just saying, the people who put forth these arguments are never willing to take them uh, to heart or to, to personalize them and say, you know what, that's true. Get together with all their family, all their friends, and start encouraging people to depopulate the world. They always want to go after the unborn. Do or... they ever get outside? I mean, have, has Bill Maher never visited Australia? Right. I mean, it's, it's got, what, 14, 15, 16 million people. They're around the tiny edge. The whole place is huge. Yeah. Yeah. They've never flown across the U.S. in a plane. I've flown out a few <laughs> times. Don't they look out the window? There are billions of acres, ah, millions or billions, and it's just huge, right across America where there's not a soul, not even a buffalo, right. and people could live there if we want to spread out, yeah. you know, irrigate the place. No, absolutely. And, and so again, he, he's just marching to the beat of the, the liberal uh, God-hating agenda yes. that, that, that wants to control life. And again, we know as scripture says, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. There's an agenda behind all this. And pray for Bill Maher. Uh, really, we have no animosity towards him, yeah. uh, no, no rancor, no hatred. We, we, are, uh, we pity him because he's lost and we were once as well. But we know the Lord can open his eyes and so uh, pray that God It would that. certainly have to be like with everyone, the grace of God, because uh, some of these guys are given over to strong delusion right. because they don't love the truth. They yeah. love the wages un of unrighteousness. The agenda is their love of sin. It's not, I'm really concerned about the world being overpopulated. Yeah. It's a love of sin that's the, uh, the provocating agent. That's true. And again, like we always say, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Mark. Mark. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say, undoubtedly, we're going to get messages and emails and posts that we are coming up against Bill Maher. We're not. We're coming up against his worldview. You know, when I was doing Q&A at uh, Lehigh University, I was accused of not being loving towards an individual who said, you know, I think we should make provision for rape. And 
I, I was I didn't really know what to say about that. You know, he basically he asked me the question. This was the question he asked. Um, could what could you be wrong? I mean, would you be open to being wrong within your worldview? And I said, well, could you be wrong that your parents might be aliens? And he said, well, yeah, I guess I could be if there's enough evidence out there. <laughs> and I went, you're open to the idea that your parents might be aliens? He said, yeah. I go, are you open to the idea that rape might be morally beautiful? And he said, possibly. <laughs> I, what, what do you say with that? Right. Well, I didn't say much. I didn't need to say much. I just kind of looked at the crowd saying, do you see what he's saying? Mm -hmm. And he got very offended. And other people were pointing that out. And I said, listen, Carl Sagan, a lot of your guys' hero, a lot of your hero Pope here speaking on your behalf with an atheism, he said, if it can be destroyed by truth, it deserves to be destroyed by truth. And I didn't say much here. And then I looked at the crowd and I said, ever watched a Richard Dawkins discussion where a Christian wants to ask a question, hmm. or Sam Harris, or the late, great Christopher Hitchens, these guys do not put up with anything. They won't even carry on a rational conversation, most of them, with Christians. So here's a Christian trying to carry on a logical conversation. So before we get the emails, and before we get the issues that you feel that we're coming up against Bill Maher, I want you to consider what he's saying here. There really is no right or wrong when he's able to make up that decision, but God is going to be held to a standard that we don't know, and he's wrong for what he does. We need to be consistent, and the atheistic worldview is not consistent when brought down to the foundation. Right. Well, I like what you said about truth that should be brought down if it can't stand, you know, being challenged. It reminded me of many years ago, I did a, a not a debate, a, a talk in a university to about 800 very nasty secular students and after the second day a girl stood up and she says I'm a Christian and in the last two days you've destroyed everything I ever believed about God. She said she was a Christian? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know if she did say she was a Christian, she just made that statement. Right. In the last two days you've destroyed everything I've ever believed about God and I said, that's good. <laughs> because if, if, it's, if it's truth, right. it's not going to alter. If it's, if it's a weak foundation, it'll come crumbling down. So yeah. it's so important to, to not just believe right, but to know what Scripture says about God. So your, 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 your foundation is upon the true revelation of God's character and nature. Mark, you got something to say? Nope. Good. I think Thank that's you. good. Just yeah. Check. Good stuff, guys. And, you know, talking about Bill Maher and the things that we're seeing uh, on TV today, uh, we're excited that uh, you're going to get a breath of fresh air with something a bit different because Noah is going to television. Uh, there are about 12 networks and <clears throat> a whole bunch of uh, channels that are going to be carrying it to coincide with the release of the Hollywood Noah oh, movie, wonderful. which is March 28th. So uh, make sure to tune in to uh, your local Christian television station, and you will most likely see Noah. You can go to our website Ask and check it out it. as well. Ask them to show it. That's yes. a good you idea. Ask them to site. show it. They can contact us, and we'd be glad to get it to them. And again, if maybe you haven't been connected with us for a while, or you haven't been on planet Earth and haven't heard about our Noah movie, uh, we want you to check out this trailer uh, that will bring you up to speed. So let's go ahead and roll. the movie there you have it that is Noah and the last days and again we have to clarify that this is not the Hollywood movie but in is contrast the movie? <laughs> <laughs> but in contrast to it awesome. uh, this is uh, this is a movie that we've produced called Noah and the last days in fact you can still download it uh, before we release it free of charge on YouTube and through uh, inexpensive DVDs you can download it by going to noahthemovie.com and the proceeds go to helping us to produce more movies like that. Uh, you saw 180, I'm sure. Many of you have seen Evolution vs. God. Now we've done Noah. And uh, Genius as well was another one of our movies. We want to continue to do the same. And so you can download it and uh, help it's us so out. It's so exciting to, on Facebook to get people's immediate reactions. And I've got lots of people saying, this is just wonderful. I cried right. when I watched it. One pastor said, I'm showing it to my church. So uh, we encourage that. Doesn't, don't need to ask permission. Some people say, I want to show up to my church, but I'm just writing to ask permission. That's nice of you, but you don't need to. We give permission. Uh, 
don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure to do that. And uh, again, we're excited about the DVD release as well because then you can give them out to people yeah. and uh, get them into people's hands because this is meant to be, again, not only a tool that encourages Christians and gets truth out there, but also gets the gospel out. Every one of our movies has the gospel in it intentionally because right. we're here to inspire and equip Christians to fulfill the Great Commission. And there's no attracts too. No attracts are coming. They're here. Yeah, they're here. Oh, no attracts are here. <laughs> <laughs> I just work here. All right, friends, on now to some questions. This is an email from John. If God created all the things we see and experience today, what created God? Oh, this is a new one. Doesn't everything need a divine creator? What divine thing created the God? Does this end up in a crazy series of gods creating gods forever? That is polytheistic, not monotheistic. Oh, no. Couldn't you argue it's a lot easier to believe in the things that have evidence to back them up, such as a Big Bang Theory? Is it not easier to create a bunch of particles in an instant than it is to create an omnipotent deity that would then go and create the universe. This guy's right on backsliding right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'm sure you came across something like this uh, in your uh, time this weekend. If not, I'm sure you've come across this question before. So how do you deal with this? If everything had to have a maker, who made God? Yeah, it is a very common question. But no, notice that when the question is asked, they really typically are not interested in the answer. Mm. Now, it seems to be somewhat of a contradiction. If everything does need a maker, well then who made God? And typically when it comes to Bible studies, I like to leave those within the realm of Christianity. Let me talk to my Christian friends about this. There are no contradictions though within God's word. There may be seemingly paradoxes, which is a seeming contradiction, but there are answers to questions like this. When you we were reading that, I was counting six different questions that came out in the midst of that. Usually they are rhetorical questions that we don't want an answer for. But right. if we go back to the first part of the question, who or what made God, the answer is simple. And the short answer is nothing did. Nothing, no one created God because God is outside of time. He doesn't need a creator from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. And it does not violate any logical fallacies in order for God to always exist. As R.C. Sproul said to Ben Stein in his interview, preparing the way for expelled. If you have a cause, you need to have a first cause. Mm. There's a cause, first cause. And this is the problem with uh, not just abiogenesis, which is how do you get living material out of non-living material, but just what was there in the beginning? We like to ask atheists, evolutionists, and typically they say, we don't know, we have no idea. There are some educated guests out there in the realm of physics, and people like to bring forth their answers, but when you think about it, something has to be there to explode within the Big Bang Theory. Well, if God is outside of time, then he can put everything inside of time. He can create this thing called time that you and I are handcuffed to, time. But God is the first cause, therefore we have causality. God and everything else now exists, so there you go. Right. Yeah, that was brilliant, uh, seeing R.C. Sproul and Ben Stein talk about that. I thought you told that. him that, man. <laughs> that was <laughs> brilliant, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank wow. you. Oh. <laughs> but it was amazing because, uh, you know, R.C. Sproul talked about the whole infinite regress issue. Yeah. And Ben Stein just sat there, and he's like, you are so intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was just floored uh, by, by his brilliance. But absolutely, Mark, that was a... That was a great answer. You are good looking and intelligent, what I said to the mirror this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, you got me all excited. Okay, on now to another question. How do we keep our worries cast upon the Lord? Scripture says, cast your cares upon him for he yeah. cares for you. Exactly. You know, Ray, do you ever worry? Sometimes I don't, and that worries me. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural worry. It's, it's, there's a lot of things to worry about, but if you, you just got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Romans 8, 28. Seriously, all things work together for good. Please, Lord, don't listen. <laughs> all things work together for good. And if you find yourself in a lion's den, God allowed it for your good. So we've got to mechanically rejoice. You know, I get my downtime. Sometimes I get down. I'm serious about this. I get a little down because I get down for no reason. Ever had that? Oh, yeah. Everything's going Why great. Why am I depressed? Yeah. Why no. am I down? And, and David had the same thing. Why are you cast down? He looked at him. Oh, my soul. And uh, you've, got to, you've got to look to the Lord and, and keep your eyes on God because uh, 
This world is full of tribulation. Yeah. You know? As sparks fly upward, so uh, trials come to, to human beings. Right. Well, Ray, I asked in the chat room here what people would like to know about your life, and someone said, what does Ray's wife think about everything Ray does? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. You got a couple weeks? <laughs> but, you know, honestly, that is a good question because... Um, she is not impressed with anything. I am not <laughs> kidding. That's what keeps you humble. I, that is so true. <laughs> she, she's not impressed with anything, you know. Yeah. Uh, I come home and say, you know, 10,000 people line up for my autograph. She the trash needs taken out. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it is really good. Yeah. Um, she's made for comfort. But, you know, people wonder that because I know we have a lot of people who follow the ministry and they wonder, how, how does someone do what you do uh, when they're married? And, and obviously it's been the strong support the two has given you throughout the Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Yeah. Behind every man, there's a woman saying, you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. And so he does it. What about you, Mark? Um, in light of all that you do, you just traveled, left town, left your wife, left your kids. You do a lot of traveling. Um, he came you do, back. He do a lot of preaching. Yeah, you did come back. So how, how, does, how does Laura deal with all of that? Boy, that, that really is a good question. I, you know, we have a great job. You know, obviously, you know, the ministry allows me typically to take a, a day off when I'm gone for the weekend, and maybe I can throw in a vacation day. I am here today. I was gone. I came. I actually didn't go to sleep until about 11 o'clock, and there's a three-hour time change. Wow. But uh, I plan on taking a day off later on inside the week. So the family time is there. And it's not like I'm always at work and I'm always on the road. I try to be gone maybe once, maybe twice a month. And a lot of times I'm able to bring one of my kids with me, which is a lot of really good bonding time between father and son or father and daughter. Right. It's, a real, it's a real good thing to know when you've got an itinerant ministry. Churches would say, would you do six meetings over the weekend? <laughs> and I'd say, oh, I can do one. I'd say, okay. That works. I thought, oh, I didn't have to do the six. Right. You know, and I get back to my family. So that was a huge revelation for me to, to say, look, I'll do your Sunday morning service. I want to get back to my wife. Is that okay? And they say, sure. Yeah. Where'd great. you go on your first date, Ray? My first that's date? That's another question. Yeah. Sue. Time is running. Oh, we went and saw Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde, that horrible oh, did movie. Did you really? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can't tell you what happened. Is that a movie. prophecy of what your life would entail? <laughs> <laughs> well, friends, time is up again. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, as you saw, the chat room's an exciting place. You can connect with us there. So if you watch us on YouTube, which thousands of you do, you can watch live at tczlive.com and join the chat room. Also remember, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube, by the way, subscribe. We've now cracked 80,000 subscribers, and that's exciting. And remember, most importantly, we brought you into our comfort zone to get you out of your comfort zone. So make sure to get out there and preach the gospel under the glory of God. For questions about the comfort zone with Ray Comfort, or to submit questions for future shows, please email us at email at tczlive.com. That's email at tczlive.com. The Comfort Zone is an outreach of living waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.